Welcome to Pitch in the Zone, the place where a couple of coaches gather each week to help a presenter with a three-minute pitch. Our coaches this week include Nathan Gould, Scotty Spursum, Michael Marchak won't be making it today, but we also have Rick Pollack and Massimo Peroncelli. All of them experienced coaches, experienced in the startup world, and I already look forward to the feedback that they uh, give to our presenter today, who is Alex Shrestha. Alex's company is called Occur, and it's a really, really neat concept. Alex, welcome to Pitch in the Zone. Hello. Um, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, it's a real, real pleasure to have you. And before we get started, can you very briefly share what is the target audience for your pitch? Sure. Um, it's probably going to be mostly angel investors or small mm -hmm. investors. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to be approaching to um, speak about the initial uh, investment to get for uh, for the development. Excellent. Excellent. All right. And with that, um, you are going to share slides, right? Yeah. Okay. So if you want to set yourself up and then take a deep, deep breath. And whenever you're ready, Alex, the floor is yours. Okay. Okay. My slides are up. Cool. Um, hello, I'm Alex. Uh, I'm founder of Occur, and we're making live streaming immersive. A few years ago, I moved to Barcelona without ever being here. Prior to the move, I spent hours daily on a Google Street View to find a place where my family could settle, mostly walking along the roads with static and outdated images. Although it did the job, I felt something was off. I want to have similar experience to Google Street View, but in real time with a real person behind the camera. I also felt there should be something bigger because it's an interesting question. How do you feel yourself present somewhere with someone half across the world without leaving your desk or phone? Since then, we spoke with more than 300 prospects and started experimenting. As they say, a picture is better than a thousand words. I believe it's tenfold for us. So let me show it to you. Here's our platform, and it starts as any other normal live stream you find on YouTube or Twitch. But here's a twist. Just take your mouse, grab and drag the video. You can see everything around me as if we're here together in real time, supporting thousands of viewers, each seeing a unique perspective with a slight delay, which is standard for the industry. Right in this section, um, we can interact. And if you have anything, uh, and if you're liking what you're seeing, um, or you have an unconventional request, like want me to buy something for you in a flea market that we just saw, uh, you can use this tipping functionality. We are on a mission to power the next generation of live streamers and creators. Those who don't hide behind the monitors at their racing chairs, but are out there in the real world those whose creations don't fit into traditional media formats. So far, we've had more than 150 hours of live uh, streams casted with an average user watching 34 minutes a session. For Mixpanel, an analytics company, we tailored a team building experience where their, where their team learned about coffee growing and drinking culture in Colombia, accidentally touching into street art and Pablo Escobar because it got caught into a camera and sparked the conversation. Mobile World Congress, an event with more than 100,000 attendees in Barcelona and Los Angeles, used our technology to give a remote access to their physical venue for their virtual attendees. A student in Curitiba, Brazil, was able to earn $60 streaming the first time for an hour, inviting viewers to his Brazilian barbecue party where his cat would steal the show every time someone noticed him. Our team of four has experience in building, failing, exiting, and consulting startups. Our designer worked at Asian Unicorn with millions of users. Our developers have built products for UNICEF, Warner Brothers, and Stellar Crypto. If you believe that the future of live streaming 
is a bursar. I would love to chat with you. We're raising X amount to grow our team, bring mobile experience, improve our infrastructure, and set up a creator success team to grow and retain the best talent. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you very much, Alex. Really good. So before we start the round of feedback, I just want to kind of like level the playing field in so far that Alex uh, has just started to work on this pitch. So this is the first week, basically. I remember last week, Alex joined us at Pitch in the Zone and I said, oh yeah, and next week, Alex will be coming up. And he looked at me uh, with a real surprise and he said, oh, it's next week already? Well, then I better get started. So uh, keep that in mind when you are when you are providing feedback, the slides and so on, they're, they're just placeholders at this point, all right? So let me get started uh, today with Massimo. Massimo, what kind of feedback do you have for Alex? Yes, and thank you for the explanation about the slides because why well, I do believe like Apple's minimalistic is the future, but they were really, truly minimalistic. So, <laughs> really <too much. laughs> but, uh, uh, so about the slides, I've seen that you stopped on the first one for the first 47 seconds. And the only thing in the slide was the name of the company and the slogan. So I think for your first 47 seconds, just put a banner on the bottom or on the top with the name and the slogan, because it was really useless. I was really, I wanted to, you know, watch you not keep reading the name of the company. So right. that's my first suggestion. And the, yeah, the, the thing that caught my, my attention was when you were truly describing the, the second live streaming, the big one, the student barbecue one. So I'm sure you will have a picture and uh, that would really describe well the, the situation. It's, I think that would be really interesting. And of course, uh, about uh, the timing, you will have to work a little bit on that because it was 24 seconds over the limit. And as uh, somebody else will say, sometimes they, they don't give you more than, if it's a three minute speech, if they cut you off, then it's, of course it's bad. Uh, and uh, I would have loved uh, a better conclusion, like a better, uh, let's say call to action because it was kind of plain but again we understand it's the first uh, very first iteration so very nice idea and i think that's the future so if you can be there first i mean you will be the next billionaire <laughs> thank you thank you massimo for this constructive feedback and let's move on to rick rick what kind of feedback do you have for our presenter today okay uh alex i, I like the idea and i think yeah i know you just started working on this but a few comments that i think will help you improve it uh, on your opening slide that you had up there for a while uh, you had a four letter word on there, which I think kind of makes you look kind of hip, but also yep. if you're looking for angel investors, there are probably older people who might find that offensive. So I don't know if, uh, you know, for a different audience, maybe for the users, that's fine for angel investors. I don't know if that's really, uh, going to help you or hurt you. Uh, I think what you could, uh, do is, you know, I saw how you define the problem. And you know, moving to Barcelona with not being there, and then Google Street View wasn't uh, immersive enough. It didn't have it. You wanted the live person behind the camera. And I thought your demo was going to be something relating to that. And I, I thought there was a bit of a disconnect from what you had talked about as a problem. And then you showed yourself sitting there in a 360 view, which I've seen before on product demonstrations on Amazon and other things. So I, I didn't really quite see how what, you're, what you were doing, how Occur was different than a VR platform showing a product. So I think if you're going to talk about Google Street View and how you needed this to see Barcelona, how it could be better, I think your demo can be more tied into that to show really how you're solving that problem. I, I didn't see enough correlation uh, between that. Uh, I did like, uh, you know, the thing about the, um, 
uh, what did I have the team experience and you're asked about, you know, what you're raising money for. Uh, I think you could tie back again at the end of, you know, once you get the money, how this is going to really change things. If you're going to open with street view and how you want it to have more immersive and having people see Barcelona or wherever it's going to be and get a better idea of it. I think you should bring that back uh, at the end. And then one little thing, you mentioned the thing about the party and you said $60, you had the dollar sign after the 60, but then when you showed something else, I think on the next slide, you had the dollar sign in front of that when you're asking for, for money. So uh, I'd just be consistent on that. But yeah, I like the idea, but uh, I think my major comment is just try to tie your problem statement and your solution together instead of having them. I, I didn't see enough correlation between the two, but I like the idea and looking forward to seeing you come back in a few weeks uh, you know, as, as you move along on this. So great job, Alex. Thank you very much, Rick. Super valuable feedback as always, Rick. Thank you very much. And moving on to Scotty. Scotty, what kind of feedback do you have for Alex? Yeah. Um, Alex, this is really, really interesting. And we just were fortunate enough to be on a trip. So it would have been fun to see more things maybe virtually with this 360 view. So I, I can see there are lots of opportunities for it. Um, what I think you could work on, and I know this is your, your first iteration, but is speed. Um, your speed of speech was very fast and I often couldn't hear each of the words. So they ran together and it was almost flat often. So it sounded more like you were talking like this and I didn't hear much variation in your voice. Um, and we, we set the tone for storytelling through not only our voice and vocal variation, but word choice and verb choice as well. So we need to have a little bit more of the flow of the rhythm of the language uh, to make it really catch. Um, otherwise you can kind of lose your audience. Like people might get into a little bit of a daze. And I, the phrase, um, also the phrase, I believe is a picture is worth a thousand words. And I thought I heard you say a picture is better than a thousand words. You can say that, but then you really need to exaggerate it. So, you know, I even think a picture is better than a thousand words, but I think it can be much more than that. So you can use the play on that, but spend more time with dramatic delivery. I think would be helpful. Also, when you gave your uh, demo, I actually thought it was kind of cool in that I could see you. It, it took me a minute to realize you were in the room speaking to me at the same time that I was seeing your room. So I thought that was interesting, but I could see more of you from the overhead than you speaking on the presentation. So I don't know how maybe, whether you could turn that around somehow because I wanted to see more of you there. Um, and then also I thought you said something and I couldn't understand it. Use this something functionality. Use this tipping functionality. Yeah, it's the tipping functionality. So you can tip directly within the platform. Okay, well it went to like that. Right, but, it, but, but as it was delivered, use this tipping functionality. And I'm and like, I'm trying to watch you and hear you. So, yeah. so take a little bit more time with the crispness, right? Of your delivery of each word, I think would be super helpful. And um, how, did you, how did you get into this? Like why, why you? I mean, I, you have a robust team, it appears, and the coffee story was super cool, you know, like, you know, doing that, but, but, but why you? So I've been a startup founder for uh, probably the past eight years. So I've built, built startups, failed startups. And um, at, at the point of starting a career, I was working at another company. Uh, until the point, I guess, I couldn't bear the idea of not working on a curve and that I just have to make it live because otherwise, like, I'm just going to go crazy, right? So um, I, I guess it's just the entrepreneurial itch that I have. Mm -hmm. But, and you've developed, you've been a, a developer or? I'm, uh, I'm more on the product side, product and growth side. Mm -hmm. uh, so I build, I build teams. I specialize the, or define the product and I figure out how to grow it. Mm -hmm. Either that's for my startup or for other startups. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, as a, I've mentioned it on the slide, but I didn't cover it with words though. Uh, I built a startup that I, one, one of which I've sold, the other one was kind of what's called Equihired, got mm -hmm. acquired and hired by another company, okay. uh, which I wouldn't call it like a massive success, but I definitely uh, kind of see that as 
some sort of a personal traction for me. Mm -hmm. No, and, and I know that you talked about in the experience we built and failed and, you know, you, you touched on things that investors want to know because often it makes you a better investment because you failed, right? Or you've had experience going through these things. So um, I think you could you could uh, benefit from fleshing out why you more because I, I didn't get a personal hook or personal story in it as well. So um, and... For your ask, maybe be a little bit more specific. Like even for us, I think you should have thrown in a dollar amount. We're looking for $100,000 to get us started. And then say something like, come join us. If you'd like to be in on the ground floor, if you'd like to be part of the tipping point, you know, to help occur, um, uh, launch, um, call me. Reach out to me right. here, something like that. Yeah. Cool. Thank, thank cool. you very much. Great, great feedback, Scotty. And I was thinking the same thing about the live demo and Massimo also made a comment uh, in the chat box. And I think one of the things is once you do not read your script anymore, what I would suggest here is to actually look over to that camera at one point and start to talk into that camera as well. And it will become truly that kind of immersive experience that you are talking about versus looking at you from the side and you looking into your screen or at the camera that's in front of you. So just turn around a little bit and maybe even wave or do something and people will get it and say, ah, this is life. He's talking to me right now and I can actually look around 360 degrees around around him there. So um, great, great uh, catch both Massimo and Scotty. Moving on, Jess, you also made a comment in the chat box when Rick was talking. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit more on that one because it's uh, definitely an issue that uh, I think is worth talking about. Absolutely. Um, and I have the worst language of anyone you will ever meet, truly. <laughs> but I saw it and I said, that's got to go because I don't know you yet, right? Like, just give me 10 minutes to get to know you and then we can, you know, talk how we want to, but um, not on the first page of an investor document, um, definitely needs to go. So that was my first thing I wrote down. And then I just, you talked for a long time and I didn't get it right until you said, you said, who am I tip when you said, then you can tip people. And I thought, who are we tipping? Like, what are we doing? I just didn't, it didn't click. And then when you said live streamers and creators, I was like, oh, that's what we're doing. I just didn't it was like just too much talking at the beginning. You didn't, you didn't tell me quickly enough what you were doing. Um, and on that same note, I would love to see the cat that was stealing the show. I mean, that would be phenomenal video to share. Just like, I mean, that would immediately be fun, lighten the mood and then, okay, now I get it. Right. So, um, you know, use some of that really cool, funny, interesting content, um, maybe put it at the beginning. So that's all I wrote down. Otherwise it's, it's great. And I, um, I, I see myself in you, like the first time I pitched, good Lord. I mean, I can't even watch it, you know, I mean, not saying you're that bad or anything. Um, but you know, I was so nervous. I was talking so quickly. It was like a mess. And so it's, it's, um, you know, you got to start somewhere in it and this group will really help you a lot. So come back. Thanks. Lord. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much, Jess. And I do agree with you 100% about bringing in the images and the videos that you will collect over time of funny moments that happen of because as you say, you know, a picture is better than a thousand words, right? So you want to actually tie as much in there as possible so that people can see themselves in the world that you are describing. Moving on, Debbie, you also just made a comment in the chat box. What kind of feedback do you have for Alex? Um, good morning. Uh, following up on Rick and Scotty, I didn't catch what came after Google. So then Rick said it was street view. So that was one thing. It, I didn't even catch what the word was after Google. And I don't even know what Street View is, so that's, <laughs> you know, so, so um, some of that, and then the, the tipping was a little confusing, but I, I do feel that um, 
myself, maybe being older and all that your talk was geared towards younger people and that people knew a lot about this. So I felt a little disconnected and that's not anybody's fault. That's just my, my age and my knowledge, you know? So um, that was one thing I, I felt a little like, uh, I don't know what he's talking about, you know, but as it went on, um, it made a little clearer. And I do think what uh, Jess said, you know, that when you brought up the, you kind of just mentioned the cat, you know, was the hero of the, that would have really been something visual to show and would have really, uh, made it very uh, lively and interesting, but it sounds very interesting, Alex, and, and good luck to you. Thank you very much. Thanks much, thanks much. And uh, you, you were one of a couple of people that mentioned the language, the pronunciation, the articulation, not being able to pick up certain words. Nathan, I think that Alex is a perfect, perfect candidate for the wine cork exercise. And I'm not going to go into details right now, Alex. You can either hop on my calendar and I work with you on this or Nathan can work with you on this. But I promise you one thing, your articulation will go through the roof. If we spend 15, 20 minutes, all you need to do is bring along a wine cork to the next meeting. All right. And with that, Nathan, what kind of feedback do you have for Alex? Well, this wine cork is uh, absolutely works. It's the funniest exercise I have come to use in my workshops now. It used to be a blah, 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 blah but now the cork is even more funny. And I just did it with a group in Australia, six or seven people down there, and they were just laughing hysterically. And they all came back with the same wow, my mouth is so much bigger than I thought it was. So we'll get you there. Okay, uh, comments. The, uh, I think in general, you're probably picking up that more pictures will help clear up some of the confusion points that people are having here. So a picture of Street View, a picture of the cat. And maybe uh, as I was listening to everybody and watching the chat come in saying, oh, I didn't realize you were actually live when you're doing that video. Maybe Maybe just hold up a sign that says, I am live right now. You know, this is real live, you know, like hold up a sign that we can read or, and that, and that might just make it clearly, wow, he is live, you know? All right. Massimo's note in the chat, this is what encouraged me to think of that picture to hold it up live because he missed that that was actually a live use of your technology right there as did other people. Uh, <clears throat> you got to get rid of that video, dude, that your room is a mess. <laughs> it's like a mess. It's so messy. I, I, I have anxiety just looking at what's in the room. <laughs> <laughs> and to Scotty's point, you've got to get outside and do another video with you outside, even though it won't be live when you do, mm -hmm. when you show it, it would be better to be outside to show what you're, show us what you're talking about. And then we won't have that disconnect between, wait a minute. I thought he talked about street view and now we're indoors. Yeah. Not making sense. Uh, I, I feel like now that I've seen you do it, and I think this is thirdish time, I, I think you need a, a technology slide, a slide that shows what is it that we are using here to, to do this? Because uh, I'm still a tiny bit confused myself as to, well, where is the camera? Is it on your head? Is it on the smartphone? Is it, where is it? And uh, so that would help. And then good, good phrasing in many places, building and failing and that was a really nice wording. Well done. I look forward to seeing how this evolves over the next couple of weeks. And uh, again, as everybody has said, come on back. I definitely will. Thank you very much, Nathan. You're welcome. Thank you, Nathan. And uh, I think you hit the nail on its head when it comes to the technology. Uh, I was talking with Alex before the session. And at one point, I actually asked him and said, Alex, do you use a regular? mobile phone for this and how do you get this 3d thingy going and what did you do alex yeah well i have to i had to show like this is, ah. this is right here ah. uh, the phone connected to the camera it's a pretty small camera with with two lenses on both sides mm -hmm. um yeah and then essentially like the the camera is pre-processing the image into a spherical one or essentially like a flat long panoramic right. which we then wrap around on the 
user um, user end. Right. All right. And I don't know whether you have seen the bright flash that happened when all these light bulbs just went on in people's minds. But <laughs> this to, like me, okay. to me, you know, um, one of the most effective ways to make a pitch or any presentation truly memorable is to use props. And you can use these props also in an online setting. I mean, just the value of you holding up this contraption here, the camera with the mobile phone underneath. To me, that tells a lot. Yeah, it's as Nathan just said, you know, it's a boof. Ah, now I get it. Now I get it. And so make that clearly a part of it. And as other people said before, Alex, please do come back because uh, creating a pitch like this is an iterative process and it does take some time to hone things and really, really fine tune them. So please come back. And for anybody that is watching this on YouTube, the recording uh, down here is the link. If you want to pre pitch at pitch in the zone, please let us know. We have spots available like next week. We already have somebody. Then we are going to take a break for Thanksgiving. And after Thanksgiving, our calendar is pretty open. So if you are interested in pitching at pitch in the zone, simply go to presentthezone.com slash pitch request with a dash in between. It's scrolling right here in the ticker. So with that, one last question from me, Alex, how was this helpful to you? Yeah, this, uh, this is amazing. Thanks so much. Uh, thank you so much for everyone's feedback. Uh, I have to put it into, into work and obviously I have to cut things out and add the things that you've said firstly about the technology, also about the connection with the problem and the demo, uh, which, which makes a lot of sense. And my crispness in, in speech, right? That's definitely something I, I need to work on. Thank you very much. Excellent, excellent. And I love how, how open you are for suggestions, how coachable you are. It's a real, real pleasure. And I do look forward to seeing you again in one of the next sessions, perhaps the one after Thanksgiving. And with that, I wish all of you a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. And we shall see each other again next week. Have fun. Bye. Bye-bye.